It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Good moment, everyone. Oh, we're so glad that you joined us here again. Uh, it's Barnett Bain here with my co-host... Freeman Michaels. You remembered. I remember you remembered. every so time. We can, we can take away that little uh, sign that we have up for you. <laughs> the I, think I think you've got it. I Your got name it. is Freeman Michaels. So good morning, Freeman. Good morning, Spence. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Um, oh. And another amazing day in Southern California. It um, is beautiful I, out there. I was driving in, and as I, as is my custom, I'm listening to the radio, and I'm hearing all about... Uh, the various um, job anxieties, and then two minutes later, I'm hearing about um, uh, bright lights on the job horizon. So, you know, it's all about what your perspective is. You find exactly what you're looking for. And I you know what do. we, what we found do. is a lot of joy and, and a lot of um, satisfaction and a lot of gifts out of doing what we uh, most love to do, and that is cutting-edge consciousness. It is. It's a gift. We keep saying it's a gift. It's a gift, a gift to show up here once a week and get to do this. Well, you know, when I look back on uh, who I was and, and, and who you were, who I, the, the guy that I met two and a half years ago when we started this, yeah. boy, that was a very, very, we were <laughs> very, so very di different, different people. Such a different people. <clears throat> well, you and I had this great conversation um, about what we do here and the qualities that make it fulfilling. And we were talking about... Uh, other things we do for you f making films and, 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 and for me the coaching and training and things that I do and, and writing and how much the I'm going to use the language frequency the kinds of ways that we get in creatively and we work with ideas and just the evolution of this show and what a gift it is and how it ends up these qualities that we tap into these experiences how they then begin to be something we long for in other areas of our life. And I'll, 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 I'll frame this precisely as the gift. So if you think of, uh, this is our work. That's how you and I hold this. This is our work. This is what we do. And we love what we do. And it's a gift. It, it comes with challenges. It comes with, you know, all kinds of other things. But we embrace all of it in that context. That is a very different way to approach work. Well, you know, I view my, my work as first and foremost um, loving yes, and growing. Well, there's the real work, yes. That is the great work, and I'm very great clear work. about what the great work of my life is. It really is that, and um, my relationships, the quality of those relationships, and my uh, individual passions, and the expressions are uh, creative. All, everything is creative, but the expressions, the forms of those expressions, they're all backdrops. That's it. To the great work of um, of loving more and having more and more freedom and making more and more safety for myself and for others. So uh, there is power in the telling of that. Yeah. And to have the uh, opportunity and the platform every week to come here and to sit with you and to have whatever guests on board that we have every week are great guests to do that that's absolutely changed me mm. over the last couple of years it's been absolutely. a deep dive down into uh, what is meaningful and what is most passionate and what is most exciting and most of all it, uh, it allows us to kind of reorient week by week uh, in a very structured way towards um, where are we going more so than where we've been totally. and what can we learn more than what we can reaffirm. And we've drawn in an amazing community of people who've decided to get on this ride with us. That's another remarkable piece, both That's in amazing. terms of the guests, but also in terms of the people who listen. I mean, they send us emails, they, they communicate with us all the time, they share what we do. That's another uh, amazing piece of this process is this whole community we've built you know, around this crazy adventure and ride that we've hopped on called Cutting Edge Consciousness, which has a beautiful intent to it, too, mm -hmm. which is the edge of possibility, that you and I formed this show wanting to play at our own edge. That was part of what we were doing. We were embracing the unknown as... It feels a little naked sometimes. It does. <laughs> like the emperor has no clothes, hey, as our viewers point out. Every once in a while, yeah. And every once in a while we show up and we don't like the way we show up, but that's okay, too. So... The question is, 
What's the question? Looking, <laughs> looking <laughs> back, there is a question here. Looking <laughs> back over the last two and a half years since we began this show, to see what has happened to uh, in, in my personal life, I know you've confessed to me uh, very vulnerably of some of the some of the edges and some of the glories and triumphs Truly. That, have, that have occurred as a result of who you've become. What can you imagine um, two years down the road or 10 years or 10 years down the road? What might become of us as a result of of this joyful alchemy that we do every week? And I can think you imagine? we have someone we can ask. Yes, somebody just happens to be on 12 hand. years. <laughs> can you imagine 12 years to f- 12 years of doing this, c- swimming around in this kind of soup, in this cauldron? Let's find out. What, what, what does that look like? Well, my goodness, we have this am- the most amazing uh, guest with us to explore this question today. For the past 12 years, Lee Cigar has hosted the Aware Show yep. on KPFK. Uh, twice a week, it's two hours a week, I think, of featuring best-selling authors and experts in the fields of spirituality and healing and all the, uh, the juicy good stuff that, um, you, uh, that you listeners join us, uh, us here at Cutting Edge Consciousness every week for, for the same kind of stuff. But Lisa, Lisa has, what, must be 1,500, 2,000 uh, hours of interviews with everybody you'd ever want to sit down and have a kitchen table conversation with. 2,000, they're 2,400, 2,400, and it seems wow. like just two years. I mean, it really does. <laughs> it seems like just two years I've been doing this. So, so t- t- tw- 2,400 uh, interviews. Now, um, uh, go ahead. I, I, Lisa and I are friends, and so I, I know you and, and your husband and your wonderful daughter, Kayla. Uh-huh. And I also know um, that you, uh, at this point, uh, you are not your average bear. I mean, you've been so uh, worked by the conversation, by playing this music. You know, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, 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 and after 2,400 hours, you are fiddling from uh, Carnegie Hall. I mean, you know what? It doesn't ever feel like I've done the same interview twice. Even yeah. if I have interviewed the same person, like I've interviewed Wayne Dyer probably, I don't know, 15, 16 times, but it always is different. And it's got a different energy, different. I get something different out of it. And that's what I love about it. I was just thinking about that this morning. I was thinking, is, is, am I any more of a different person than I was when I started this? Absolutely. <laughs> right. right. So let's 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 tease this out. What are some of the ways that you've been changed by well, the process? I, I'll tell you. I I'm not sitting on a mountain at an ashram and and meditating to the moon. I am. <laughs> no, I'm a mom. Not. I am an ev- and what I what I've learned from kind of going to the mountain and back is that it's about every day consciousness yes yes it is cutting edge but it is everyday practical in the muck and the mire what do i do in the face of judgment what do i do when somebody else when someone else is screaming at their kids what do i do when i see um uh people being unconscious in their conversations with themselves it's those moments that i have learned that i that i'm actually learning something you know for a while, I just kind of let it all happen and let it all happen, and then there was a certain time, I don't remember when it was, but it just came screaming out of me, you can't talk to your kid that way. Don't you understand what it happens when they're re- registering that? <laughs> and I'm like on the side of a soccer field going, oh, that was uncalled for, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it works when you allow yourself to be worked by it. I mean, when you signed yeah. up mm-hmm. you know, to have this conversation, uh, that was a, you know, that was a big commitment. And no one knew it, anybody, no one knew what you were talking about yeah, back, back then. then they right. really didn't what know. Did you, what were you talking about? I remember listening to you when I first, like back in the <laughs> early years of me living in Los Angeles and thinking, what's this woman talking what about? What is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> she's talking about angels. Does she have any clue she's on the radio? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Does she know that people are listening I to her? <laughs> Yeah, and I got that a lot, too, because I was on, and I still am, a uh, left-wing, liberal, political radio station. And the way that the AWARE show got on in the middle of the afternoon, 
four days a week, having never happened before. I mean, they've never taken on a strip show like that, which means four days a week, I'm not doing a stripping show. Means four <laughs> days a week. Because you would have had seven days a week if you were doing a stripping. <laughs> That's right. A bigger audience. You <laughs> might get a bigger much audience. bigger audience. <laughs> <laughs> because that's real. Um, Screaming, you know, we need to consider doing a stripping Yeah, show. yeah. If we took our trousers <laughs> off, we might do really well. Or not, depending upon where you're Cutting out. edge stripping. <laughs> great. I've actually even talked a lot about that, about relationships, about what, of course, you know a lot of from John Gray, but yep. about what... So the, the bottom line is to have to have this, this opportunity to have this conversation in the middle of the day would not have worked unless people were listening to it and people got it. And it and the style that I have is the same as yours. It's a conversation that someone happens to be listening in on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's the way it all is because I'm working stuff out. And and I, I mean, I, the reason I talk it and call it everyday consciousness or p- practical consciousness is because I'm still in the stuff, working it out, still hitting up against new challenges, new things, it, it, boundaries, you know, things like that that I'm learning. You know, my new thing is. How to say no? Mm-hmm. Think I would have gotten this by now, but it's still one of those, you know, people pleasing stuff that I got from when I was a child, and I get to work it out and listen and learn all day long and all night long with I re- with my research, and then as a mom, parent, wife, business owner, and everything else too. So you do the same thing. It's a, there's always an edge. There's always an edge. So I'm curious. You mentioned a little bit, shared a little bit about how you personally changed from the beginning of your broadcast career in this uh, consciousness area. Mm -hmm. And I am very curious because you have a very, very unique perspective on how the entire um, 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 consciousness path in terms of the mainstream, how that has matured since you began. And the media around it. And the media, the whole whole conversation. Nothing's the same. From the time you began, how has that matured? It's actually really, it's, it's interesting to me because... When I was 20, I started a production company in the entertainment industry filling audiences for television shows. Mm-hmm. And I still have this company today. And it's, um, it was, from my experience, um, a very unconscious field that I was in because I was this young 20-something and I was dealing with producers who were, you know, much, much older than me and they could not relate to a young female putting money through her company in large amounts because we would pay the audiences and they just didn't know what to do with me other than wanting to have sex with me or demean me or in some way diminish who I was. Mm -hmm. And I had, at the meantime, been taking classes on, um, on intuition and how to develop my intuition. I even started doing readings for a while on people and their, and helping with their healing processes. And so I'm sitting here in this place of developing my my consciousness, but yet my industry was the lack thereof. And uh, they, they wanted the strip show. It, yeah, they wanted the strip show. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this doesn't work. So the likelihood of getting any, and I was also, you know, helping with producing other segments, and the likelihood of getting anything in terms of consciousness on the air was never going to happen. I was working on a daytime talk show, and we were doing segments about wash machines and, you know, cooking and things like that. And it was, it was good, but it wasn't, I was never going to have anybody come on and talk about, um, about self-healing, healing from the inside out, that you can heal your cells with your brain. I mean, that wasn't ever going to get on at the 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. That's absolutely, that's absolutely so. And now it seems to me 12, 13 years ago, looking back, it was really, um, the conversation was weighted towards the um, the phenomenon stuff and sort of kind of the fluffy stuff. And uh, um, people I remember um, at the Bodhi tree, uh, myself included, um, wearing little kind of crystal amulets and uh, not to not to disparage crystals because if you walked into my home it would look like you were in a mine in Arkansas. Uh-huh, you didn't have yeah. to so, get into it so, so all the way there. Exactly. <laughs> it's but, um, but these days it's really a, a much grounded, more mature seasoned um, uh, embodied spirituality and consciousness and we are hearing um, we are hearing 
I from think, neuro about uh, neuroplasticity as a reflection of kind of of, of consciousness yeah. choices. I mean, it's a very very much more. And that's how people can hear it, and it is yes. easier to hear it that way when you ground it in science. And I love the aspect that there's so much funding now for these research studies and for these scientific studies to be done to be able to validate the entire conversation. That's just ear candy for me. But at the same time, the audience in the mainstream media or mainstream uh, some feature films, are they still not ready for it in a certain way? The, the, the funding isn't there as much as it is for major blockbuster films or for even daytime talk shows. And I've seen it done throughout the you know, 20 years that I've had the other company where I've been filling audiences for talk shows, and I've seen one after the next, after the next, after the next, come and go, come and go, come and go. When anyone would ever try to infuse a spirituality conversation, it's guaranteed cancellation within six weeks. I've seen it for years. It's very, very difficult. I have um, largely stopped referring to it uh, in my when I'm speaking. That's around the side. key. I no, call we, we it. We need to take a quick break, but that that that's the key, Barnett. I call it creativity. Yeah. And then I am able to address the same talking points and drill down to the, uh, this, my same areas of passion and interest. Yes. And people are, they lean in and they're very, very engaged. Yes. And they come to, uh, all by themselves, they come to the connection that there is something beyond logic and reason, um, something that is uh, mysterious and possibly even mystical. Sometimes they call it religious, but they come to it themselves. I just open the door and call it creativity. It's <coughs> awesome. Or they'll come up to you afterwards and they'll go, I know exactly. Yes. And it's great. But it, now I think we've reached that critical mass where it has reached the tipping point. And well, we've why. reached the critical mass where we need to uh, put <laughs> the clutch in, go pay a couple of bills. We're going to come right okay. back with Lee Cigar, uh, and we're going to continue this conversation here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And we're back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain and our guest, Lisa Gar. <laughs> Before we left for break, Barnett, we were talking about the language and framing it in a way where people could meet the material. Um, one of the challenges, and you know, Barnett, you know this uh, about my work, I, I've been doing a bit more corporate work, is that um, I didn't realize, and, and our dear friend Gabriel Nosevich, who I've been working with, uh, sort of admonished me. He said to me, you know, you, you're you going to have to, Freeman, if you're really going to serve this population you're working with, we're doing a training in Chicago with a company. He says, you're going to have to put down your position. You're going to have to, you know, let go of your contempt for corporations. And I had no idea I was doing that. And it was very subtle. He probably was the only person who would have ever detected it. But one of the challenges, and I see this in our community a lot, is us and them. Yes, we, I was just we wear a bit yes. of a badge, right, Us Lisa? This is them, absolutely. And I was just about to say that. Yep, yep. It's well, say a little more about that, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Good, now talk. Yeah. No, it, it's not an us versus them conversation. It's, it's within our own selves. There, there's not a, a division of, of audiences out there. It's just the way that the media has been displayed and it's been safe over the years. And it's about track records, and that's important to realize, is that people need to make decisions when they're spending a lot of money based on what has worked in the past. Whenever you uh, forge a new way or create a new path, it takes a while to grow something like this. But I have been in the unique position over the past 12 years to see the audience grow in an exponential way. And through the radio conversations, where the people have contacted and said, yes, I, I get it, or I tried this technique and I healed my knee, or I went into this house and did this ceremony and I sold the house that I have been in myself for two years, or I helped my mom transition and hadn't spoken to her for 15 years and told her I loved her on her best deathbed because I heard this author on your show. I mean, serious, life-changing, transformational moments have occurred from people listening to the messages of the people I've had on the show. And then now it's grown into, now I'm on Guy MTV, and this is an online television network, which is doing amazing things in, in terms of programming. And Hay House Radio, which is great, because they've got over a million people a month that listen to 
an online internet radio station, and of course there's KPFK, there's 20,000 people every 15 minutes tuning into the radio show because the conversation grew with word of mouth. And this has all been word of mouth. It's not something that we advertise or, or I don't have a speaking career, but it's, it's because people get the conversation and they've had it with their friends or with their themselves or they've read it in the books and and there was a point where the self-help section at the beginning of when I started this did not exist in large ways in bookstores. Now, well, the self-help section took over a certain section of the bookstore where it became the largest section of bookstores when we had them. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I mean, it has definitely evolved and changed and grown over the years, and I'm so honored to be able to see the progression and and how it's continuing because it is an all-inclusive conversation. Nobody is left out of this conversation. It is all the same conversation. It's just in, displayed in different ways. But part of that's the quality you bring to it. I mean, part of your gift, Lisa, and I had the pleasure of sitting next to you during the birth of 2012 and doing a, a segment with you, is that you are so approachable, you're so real, and this idea that I'm a mom, I, I struggle with this, that makes it very... Again, it's it's meeting people at a place. It, it's not. I'll tell you what. It's not. It's not the sage from the stage gig. Right. That doesn't feel authentic and approachable and real. It it doesn't work. What what you do specifically is you're a bridge. You're a bridge for people. So maybe we have some wisdom teacher sitting next to you. Yes. But you represent the bridge. It's your humanity that comes through. Yes. And that's what makes it approachable. And that's the piece that I think Gabrielle was sort of saying to me, Freeman. You know, get down off your pulpit and come down and join us, and then you can really, you know, be of service here. Right. Absolutely. And I, that's right. I just am um, at Gaia right now, and I had the um, incredible pleasure of interviewing Colette Baron reed who is an, a med- well, she's an intuitive, and she wrote this book called Weight Loss for People Who Feel Too Much. Mm. And, it's a, and it was all about empathy and how sensitive beings, like you both are, and I am, and everyone listening is, tend to be overly sensitive and suck up the energy in the room and then don't understand why we feel like we don't have any boundaries left because we've intuited and felt too much all day long and never said no or separated ourselves from anything throughout our entire day and we get to 4 o'clock and we're starving mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we you know, haven't set that boundary up. And it's not just the eating that it manifests in, but it's every single thing that we don't separate ourselves from because we are such empathic beings. And I sat there at 4 o'clock last night reading her book, starving, going, God, that's why I'm hungry, because I haven't <laughs> been able to say no all day or make a decision. Or it's, Yeah, it's, it, as I'm sitting there at the, in the soccer field at the goalie practice, going, <laughs> I'm starving, and I'm reading this book. How can I? <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting that you bring that up. Um, you know, you always hear... Or, or maybe it's it's the phenomenon is you know you buy a, I remember I, when I was young and I I bought a little Volkswagen and it was red and suddenly everywhere I drove I saw a red uh, Volkswagen. <laughs> As my daughter said, punch buggies, punch buggies. Uh, <laughs> so you kind of uh, wherever your attention is going, you um, you you just see it reinforced and mirrored every place. So what you're talking, what you're saying about uh, Colette Baron Reed. I am in the thick of of uh, owning that phenomenon in my own life and experiencing it for the first time, relating to it, not just identifying with it, but starting to look at it. And I'm realizing that I am not f- I'm not as in my body as I can be. As a, a it, it it remains a a virgin frontier for me largely. And that when I am over-functioning in my head, then um, I am much more easily drawn into other people's stories or I am much more easily, um, um, I'm, I'm much less aware of my own boundaries because my boundaries are physical boundaries. They're, they're energetic boundaries. They're not mental constructs of boundaries. And I'm so often thinking, 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 and uh, unaware that my, um, my, my body is where my emotions reside and where I am able to experience a sense of my, uh, where I begin and where I end and where somebody is. 
And that for Draining you, Barnett, me. is one of your greatest gifts and your greatest challenges to say, knowing you and knowing mm-hmm. and just knowing your brilliance and the highly creative being that you are and I and I've seen you behind a camera and your entire physicality changes into this like you've done that for lifetimes after lifetimes and your artistry is beautiful and you the reason why you are so good at that is because you blend the world together between your empathy and your visual and your compassion and in your soul and that's why you're so good at what you do and then there's a life where you have to put walls up and bound to know where you end and others begin and to know where you're safe in the world and to do those at the same day and bounce back and forth between creativity and boundaries and creativity and structure and then empathy and and no (laughs) it's yes it's it is a challenge. It is a real challenge, and it's, uh, you know, as you, as you point out, you know, it's wonderful to be known by one's friends. It feels very uh, safe, and it feels very um, um, poignant and vulnerable to be seen and to be known by one's friends. And, and you're, you know, the truth that you speak is so uh, enormous uh, it shows up everywhere. I was um, I spent the weekend with our our mutual dear friends Stuart Emery and Joni, mm. and Stuart is working on this book called Who's in Your Room, and it is exactly to this point mm-hmm. that how do you develop the capacity to say no, uh, and it's it's a seasoning because we have for so long uh, developed the capacity to say yes. You know, um, part of, of the consciousness path is to be able to say yes to um, the willingness to entertain uh, ideas and possibilities that are beyond the way we've been socialized. And so we learn to say yes, and not just as, as we learn as small children eventually to create our space by saying no, no, no. Eventually, we say yes, and we become uh, sufficiently good, sufficiently mastered at saying yes, and we grow. And then it comes the next uh, level of growth, which has to do with defining boundaries. Who do we let into our room? We become who we're with, and we become the ideas we entertain. Um, on the Aware Show, you have become the ideas that you entertain, and likewise here. And now, how do we begin to say uh, no to overwhelm and to begin to steer the ship of the great work into into the next place of uh, uh, of this great unknown? Well, it's no mystery that we all ended up in the self awareness game. <laughs> That's it. I mean, what 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 you're talking about, Barnett, and it's brilliant. Is and and I think Lisa, you were talking about this earlier. <clears throat> Look, th- there's a commonality between all of us. We're all feelers, right? We're also all kind of have an element of extrovert. And at least, at least we're willing to put ourselves out there. We're willing to, you know, be the example, right? We're the, we're the ones that raised our hands in class. Uh, even if we all got, strip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and that's what we're doing. But it's very interesting because my sense that there's a particular expression of me that I've always been drawn to. You know, this one happens to feel pretty good. I was a soap opera star for one moment, and I did this other thing. I wrote this book called Weight Release, A Liberating Journey, all about my weight challenges. Mm. <laughs> just just to, to... Yeah, no kidding, huh? I didn't know that, yeah. Because I'm a feeler, and that's how I coped. Oh. But this idea... That, that wasn't the best expression of me in terms of the behavior around food, but the expression of me that feels the best is when I'm self-aware... And I find a way to constructively move towards this expression, the self-expression. And we're all doing it in this arena, right? This is our arena. This is the place that we get to come out and take those things that might have been challenges in in many arenas, Mm -hmm. move them into the space of gifts, offer them, Mm. right? Yes. We're the lab rats. Yes. (laughs) In our own experiments. We're also the change agents. And it's also a way for other people to identify with the conversation that they had in their head while sitting in traffic mm-hmm. and to put it into words that other it. people are talking about. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So lab rats, <laughs> there's something, I, I think it, it's a little, uh, it's a lot more self-aware than... I agree uh, with you. That, that, uh, change that, yeah. agents I like, uh, map makers certainly, path benders. 
we are I'm, I'm uh, just finders, the risk in, not in, even I'm seekers. just connoting the risk in that statement, that there's a way in which we're willing to put ourselves through a process mm. in service to something bigger. We know there's an expression, at least I know for mm -hmm. me, there's an expression of me that I, I, I've, I've denied and repressed most of my life. Good luck to find constructive ways to move into, sure. wow, this is a way I can put it out there that feels pretty good. Well, That's we've crossed, a, I think we've crossed a line as individuals and as, uh, as a um, microculture and as a world. We have really crossed the line. There's no going back. I don't even remember what it was like 12 years ago. Do you, Lisa, <laughs> do you have any idea what it was like? Two and a half years ago, I don't know. Well, the interesting thing was that the conversation, he'll, this will give you an idea of like a blast of the past. Um, what we were hearing was, um, you need to love yourself in order to love someone else. Yeah. Or you need to have fruits and vegetables every day <laughs> in order to feel good. And those were great and powerful, but whenever I see a book that says love yourself these days, if I don't see the exercise and how exactly in the exam and all that. I, I mean, it's evolved into such a wonderful place of getting into the specificities of it all. I mean, this whole boundaries conversation is very specific. Mm -hmm. Before, what we read was, um, I can't say no and I don't know why, and you would get the psychological definition for it, but you really would never see what the, the highly sensitive, empathic person view of why they're so sensitive was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we could have, as a highly sensitive person, viewed uh, um, something that happened to us uh, in our childhood as much greater than it would have been perceived by somebody who wasn't maybe sensitive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that, for us now, in a way, we have permission to say, oh, see, that felt to me like horrific abuse to be yelled at every day, or when I was hit as a child, that for me felt like complete, total physical abuse. And for us, it absolutely was. Yeah. And so now that we get a chance to have a voice to it all and to express ourselves, there's, you know, it's gone beyond that sometimes where you teach what you need to learn the most, right? Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. interviewed a lot of people like that that teach what they need to learn the most, and they're still working out their processes through their books. And there is a point at which... Uh, you don't just leapfrog past it, but there is a point at which the processing becomes a hiding that we processed sufficiently. There's always going to be more to scratch away at, but you process sufficiently to begin to um, move with uh, a confidence born of the heart. Yeah. Uh, you move confidently into the unknown with the awareness that you do have the tools and the resources to meet the, rose as it r the road as it rises in front of you. Yeah, it's been a great journey. And also to see the people that do have taught these messages and worked them out through their books have carried the audiences along with them where people listening and learning have now gotten over those issues so significantly now that they're into the next phase of their writing and the people are into their next phase of consciousness and existence and super, super cool to watch the whole transition happening and occurring Still, well, know. we don't even we don't even call it self help anymore. We call it consciousness because mm -hmm. we realized through all of this, through all the prescriptive stuff of here's my problem, this is how you fix it. We we elevated all these people to sages uh, on the stage and, and guru, and then recognized that maybe that's a bad bargain. Uh, so today, just to look back twelve years, there, it's not a self help conversation. It's a consciousness conversation. So it allows for a greater complexity. You know, it allows for, it's a different, there's a different quality to the conversation today, which in my mind is an expression of the evolution itself. Yes, and it is an inclusive conversation. And as our world gets faster and faster paced through the, you know, the internet and whatever it is, it's, it's so much more important to understand that going, going into these phases of consciousness isn't separate from anything else in your life. It is all the same yes well you you just put it uh, you just said it so beautifully um we are not separate from each other or from the world we live in and there comes a point when the personal process becomes the world process it is so um 
There's also comes a point in which we have to <laughs> say take goodbye. As much break. fun as we're having with our guests, uh, we have no. to <laughs> wave goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we are so glad uh, that you joined us today. Such uh, a gift. Such a gift. And um, for those of uh, uh, for the one or two of our listeners who uh, are not aware of the Aware Show, uh, please tune in uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays on KPFK for those of you in Southern California, Los Angeles, or in Santa Barbara. Or on Hay House Radio. Or on Hay House Radio. Or or everywhere. You know what? Google Lisa Gar and find her. Yes, or you can go to my website, which is theawareshow.com, and all of the venues I'm on are listed on there. Uh, uh, you Lisa. can also, um, if if anybody has blinked, blacked out on, during that last piece, you can find out all about Lisa Gar on the Cutting Edge Consciousness website. So Lisa, <laughs> lots of love to you. Uh, say hi to, uh, to the family and look forward to seeing you soon and having you back sooner. Thank you so much, both of you. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Lisa. Thank and for you. those of you listening, stay tuned because we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Just got done talking to our friend Lisa Gar. Uh, amazing work she's done. Uh, she is clearly a pioneer. Uh, for us, she blazed a trail. <clears throat> um, she was in in the covered wagons. Okay. She was she, in the covered wagons. She went west. <laughs> That's right. And uh, when there was uh, no roads or consciousness. Yeah, she built she, the, she built the roads that brought us to where right. we are. That's yeah. right. So um, it's so great because one of the things that came through for me is that she trusted in what she was doing. I mean, she stayed true to herself in spite of evidence that she'd be better off doing a strip show. Um, that's a joke. Uh, but, but it isn't because here's the deal. That, you know, m- many of us, and, and I'm going to raise my hand here, uh, want to be liked. We want it to work. We try to fit it in. It's very hard artistically to stick with something, even if part of us knows this is really it. This is what I want to be doing. And we've had that challenge. I mean, we've we've tried to figure out ways and how do we craft this differently. But the wiser part of us for two How do we get years, new sponsors for yeah. anybody that's listening that feels compelled instantly to call in? And yeah, we're constantly looking for sponsors. Yep. That's a huge issue for us because it's the, it's the backbone of being able to continue to do it. But the point being, enough. Mm-hmm. Enough of us has known mm-hmm. that this form of expression works at least for me and it's had a tremendous impact on my life the sticking with it for two and a half years um it's not just true of the work it's true of our relationship it's true of all these things that and here's where i want to tie it together the intention for me the field that Mm -hmm. that intention creates can hold everything my work is to trust it to trust the, the generous and generative intention, the quality of how I want to show up and what I want to offer in the world. It's, it's that, the strength of that, the degree to which that I feed that is strong enough to hold a lot of the bumpiness. And the bumpiness provides a kind of depth and a kind of dimension to the, to the experience that makes it rich, that makes it soulful. Mm-hmm. Was that English? I don't know. I mean, no, I, 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 I hope you was, was trying it to was say. English. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you just kind of looked at me like, what, what did you say? Well, <laughs> I was looking at you because I, I, I what it brought up for me mm. I, uh, I, is the degree to which I am absolutely in alignment with that. And then I was, I asked myself, is that, um, is that what's there for me? Is my work trusting it? And, um, my work is certainly partially trusting it. Yep. But then I thought, well, what is real? How really do I? And it's per everyone. There is no right or wrong answer here, folks. It's, this is a totally individual thing. Is that my? Uh, uh, is that my relationship with mystery? Yeah. And um, I think my relationship with mystery is to uh, learn to consciously um, um, dance with it, to learn how to. Uh, consciously create uh, success and I have a very specific definition of success that uh, has to do with um, fully appreci- being appreciative and fully being alive and fully being connected to what is going on and 
and um, and sucking the juicy uh, marrow out of uh, moments and looking to see mirrored the gorgeous charms of my reality and uh, owning them as not being separate from me, mm. that I have to be that in order to see that. Um, so that, I, that is how I am holding my work in life. Um, I think we're saying the same thing. Oh, I we don't are. think we well, have to be exactly saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but look, there's a sense, uh, I call it the scent of destiny. There's a sense that there's something I have to give in the world. I don't know exactly what it is. I know qualities that are associated with it. I know some of the expressions, uh, various things I've done in you my know, life. The, you're talking about the function as opposed exactly. to you're not aware of the form of it. I have a you're hints, aware of I, the I had a few, a few forms, a few ways that it's taken form <clears throat> that I can kind of point to and say, wow, there's qualities in that experience that really work for me. Well, you just have to look backwards and you'll see a whole bunch of them because your function hasn't changed enormously, no. uh, although it has become... Um, tuned in a lot of the static and a lot of the other stations have been tuned out where we're increasingly becoming more attuned to it well this is where the, the boundaries conversation comes in is that i've become clear enough at least in terms of the qualities i want to express the form again my work is to kind of let go of the forms i mean not entirely because you know obviously this is a form um, but it's not the only form. It's the quality and the experience that I'm really juiced by and finding other ways to express that. You know, we did the, we, we spoke about the birth 2012. I had the opportunity to sit with Lisa, do a wonderful, have a wonderful conversation. Jack Canfield uh, jumped in and uh, Rinaldo Brutico jumped in and other folks as well. It was really uh, magical and fun. Um, that was another expression. You and I did a lot of work there on mm -hmm. there. Um, what was our stage called again? I don't remember, but we were on a specific stage, the vision stage. Mm -hmm. And, and that was a blast doing that. Well, there's another form. It's not exactly, I didn't know how it was going to look, but we jumped in. Mm -hmm. uh, trusting that the intention, the organizing force of the universe or my universe or whatever about what I want to generate, what are the qualities? You said something brilliant during that time to me too. Here's a little uh, snapshot into the deeper thread about the boundaries. I was uh, in makeup and you came in and you, you said, you looked at me in the eye, you said, you okay? I said, I'm okay. And then I started rambling into all the things I thought we needed to do. And you said, stop. We just do Did our show. Like that? No, in a loving way. Oh, good. Yeah, no, no, it was, it was awesome. You said, stop, Freeman, we mm -hmm. just do our work. Freeman, you're okay, we just do our work. Because what I was hearing from, you know, was the part of me that wanted to get it right. We were under pressure. There were time constraints. I was wearing another hat too, which was I was producing mm -hmm. the show, the the stage. I was mm -hmm. producing the whole mm -hmm. uh, lineup. Mm -hmm. um, but but it was so powerful because I had to ground in the intention, ground mm -hmm. in what do we know. Mm -hmm. And it was so easy to get distracted in that moment, which I was. And you brought me back, which is partly our our job, was we help each other connect back to, wait, 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 what's the intention here? What are we really up to? We're getting distracted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I think the boundaries represent. So those represent ways that we keep coming back to, mm -hmm. as you were sort of putting it, the focus here. Well, I love that. Uh, I, what comes up for me is um, a picture of the round table, this sort mm. of Arthurian round table and the qualities of these um, partners of the knights, the knights round, mm. you know, and they all come they all come to um, together as as peers, and they're all expressions of a particular uh, archetypal energy. Mm. You know, there's this civility. What is it to be? What is it to bring civility into the mix? And what is it to bring gallantry into the mix? To be able to say, "Well, Freeman, uh, I r respect where you're coming from," and we can also gallantly honor our own great work and the own, our own style with which we uh, approach it. And, uh, and that's the trust piece. And we'll drop into a relationship with that and we'll see what emerges. So there's the gallantry and then there's the humility of even though I said that, um, I could get off it the next second. Right. You know, or sometimes it takes me longer than that. And sometimes I'm... Um, stubborn and obstinate 
But there is no knight at the round table who is stubborn and obstinate. I don't. There is no. They might be, but the intention. But that is, that's not what they're bringing. Right. They're well, not invited to the table because of their obstinacy. And the intention which that table represents, what's in the middle of that table, is a positive intent. It's a very generative intent. And what it does is it organizes everything. And mm-hmm. it's big enough as a field of energy to hold all these various archetypes. And they yes. go from being potentially destructive, and they can be, to constructive and complementary. Because that intention, that generous intention, is big enough to hold the whole damn thing. Yes. And, um, and if the metaphor in it, uh, I think, is to learn to become uh, masterful of it. Not controlling of it, yeah. but masterful of it. Uh, in the mastery of it, it, for it to become negative, to be put to darker uses, yeah. that's a choice. So uh, it, uh, it's to say, well, these things come with it. Well, they, they come with it um, in the same way that I have in me um, the choice. I could kick a dog as well, but uh, is, uh, those are not impulses that are running me. No. So, uh, the great work for me is to become aware now. Uh, I'm sufficiently aware of, of um, the restrictive, the lesser, the darker parts of myself. Yeah. Not completely, but, but more and ser- more. In service to where we're going. Well, th- yes. I'm only aware, <laughs> I'm only aware of, of them um, uh, in service to, I want to make space for them. I don't want to disown them. I don't want to pretend yeah. that they're not there. I want to uh, love them. And um, in the doing, in the owning of that, I am free to express uh, the part of myself that is exponentially, endlessly, infinitely larger than that. Yes. And, and those, they don't have those tendencies. And then to work in synergies with other people that's why i love doing the show with you um that's why um uh, i reference that kind of that those partnerships that that where we're we become conscious alchemists of all these other frequencies and you start stirring them in well we're driven by the same generous intent the t- the space between us mm. is clear enough i mean the waters get murky they do because look we get distracted we get off track you know we, we start looking out in the world and seeing how well the strip show is doing and we're only getting X number of views or listens or whatever the heck. And we go, wait a minute, what do we do, you know? And we go, no, 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 trust it. Come back to mm-hmm. the intention. Mm-hmm. It's strong enough to hold everything. And it's even strong enough to hold the shadow pieces. And that's the big, big that's a big part of the what makes it dimensional and soulful. One of the joys of what we've created is we get to bring that stuff in. So what lies beyond the shadow pieces? And I am sure that there'll be some listeners who say, who push back at that and who will say, um, let's just stick with the shadow pieces. And I am not, um, I'm not leaving the shadow pieces, but to trend, to include it and to try what it. lies beyond the shadow pieces. So there's a lot of mystery that has to do with what, is being held uh, in shadowy ways in my subconscious and unconscious. Sure, but what about the um, the glorious, uh, promising, beautiful chaos? What lies beyond there? I don't think that's that's a great question. That's not a uh, mystery. That's mysticism. Yeah, and I am really drawn at this point to um, exploring the the. The mystical, the mystical experience. So uh, I'll answer some of the thing qualities that I know lie beyond it are uh, joy, and fun, and um, acceptance, and I don't know. I mean, there, there, there's something. There's a rich offer on the other side of. This is such a good point because sometimes the struggle, as you were pointing out when Lisa was on, the struggle takes on a life of its own. The process takes on a life of its own. Like, are we over processing? We talked about this in the wife show. Is that the passion and the compassion and the, the joy. fixing and the techniques and the well, techniques for fixing and they're appropriate. Yeah, and then but on and the other then, side of that, so you fixed it. Now, yeah. how do you know you fixed it? Right, right, right. Um, yeah. What happens was, you know, suddenly, well, uh, I, the way we have held our relationship to the world and the ideas that we have about how the world works—these linear, the present is the result of the p- past—it be- they begin to have 
They begin to look a little bit like a Swiss cheese. There's suddenly these holes that uh, defy logical explanation that show up, these miraculous events that occur, these dreamlike uh, turns of events and synchronicities that are wonder-filled. Yeah. And have uh, nothing to do with um, the plodding sequence of reality <laughs> as we are, that, that we're comfortable with. Right. What happens if that really gets cut loose? Yeah. I don't you know, know. I used to. <laughs> I, I remember, I don't know who it was that wrote the distinction that there was like a, the, a, hair, a razor's edge between uh, a mystic and a madman. Yeah. And as someone who, uh, can I admit this on air, that as someone in my youth experimented with uh, mind-altering substances um, and uh, not um, to very good outcome, uh, nightmarish experiences, I uh, understand what happens when, um, when um, a centered consciousness becomes unhinged and yeah. goes off uh, uh, along the rails of an imagination that imagines itself. But to go down the road of an imagination that imagines itself with all my abilities to respond intact, with a sense of my character intact, with an awareness of my darkness being held in the, 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 the meta me, the bigger me that is loving, that is able to meet challenge and meet uh, chaos, that's the big adventure. That's, That's big what one. I'm. The, now we there, talked earlier. What line between a genius and a fool? I mean, what we're talking about only at the beginning, right? No, I, I, what you're saying right now is the the ability to stretch out beyond the edge, as it were, the comfort zone, to go for things that are bigger and that are less held and 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 and, and, and more risky. Only know? the the line of of um, of falling over into becoming unhinged. Only at the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning, the roads, uh, s they seem to be one road. And then very soon, or, or in, in the course of, 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 of investigating and exploring, they begin to separate very narrowly and very narrow. And eventually, it's two worlds. Yeah. With that, I think we've come to the end We're of this We're going to have to pick up this conversation because this is fantastic. But at the, uh, at the uh, behest of time, we're going to say goodbye. We will see you uh, next time. Thank you for listening in. Uh, if you'd uh, like, check us out on our Facebook page or on our YouTube page. Um, but it's time to turn the page, so we'll see you next week.